Since our last Baker Tilly Pensions Group conference, the sector has continued to evolve, driven by a host of influences. Last May, the new coalition government formed, appointing Steve Webb as the latest in a string of pensions ministers. June brought further guidance on record keeping from the pensions regulator, closely followed by George Osborne's first budget, which reduced the annual pensions allowance to £50,000. The new government then took the industry by surprise in July, when Webb announced the switch from RPI to CPI. And the August headlines foretold doom and gloom, fearing that a bubble in the bond market was about to burst. As autumn closed in, the DWP published an independent review on making auto-enrolment work. And the Accounting Standards Board opened consultation on the future of UK accounting standards. Assisting trustees in assessing the strength of their employer's covenant was on the TPR's mind in November, also the month when Nest awarded Tata a 10-year administration contract. The year ended with the headlines predicting that the incidence of fraud was on the increase and reporting the judgment in the Lehman Nortel case, which supported financial support directions over unsecured creditors, giving greater protection for members and less certainty for employers. The new year brought with it the same momentum of change with the introduction of the 2011 Pensions Bill in the House of Lords and TPR's consultation on enabling good outcomes in DC pension provision. In February, we saw the abolition of the default retirement age before Lord Hutton released his final report on public sector pensions in March. And here we are once more in April for the Baker Tilly Pensions Group Conference. The last 12 months having added to the shape and direction of the future of pensions, giving us a clearer view of the road ahead.